Hello YouTube fans, this is the Skull Clown here to review MFKZ, aka Motherfuckers. Um, so, this movie came out in 2017. I watched it on Netflix, and this is my second time watching it on Netflix. Um, I'm going to buy the DVD next month because I enjoyed it. <laughs> Basically, from what I have saw from the movie, if you take They Live... Men in Black, and Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, you get this movie. <laughs> That's literally what this is. It's literally that type of movie. So imagine all of that, and you'd be like, holy shit. So, there we go. So, we got um, the main character here. Um, his name um, his name is Angelino, but everyone calls him Lino, basically. And his best friend is... um. um Vince, not Vince, um, Vise, there we go, Vise, and Willie, <laughs> so, these three main characters are actually, like, well, the main main character, um, he, the main main character lives in LA, you know, DMC, lives around there, and he's, he has a roommate, obviously, with the, you know, with the skull, fiery kid. Wait a minute. That looks familiar. But anyways. um, He's roommate with them. He's roommate with cockroaches and shit, which is just like... <laughs> <laughs> um, But eventually, he finds out more about himself. Because um, in the beginning of the movie, he's a pizza delivery. And he gets fired on that day. And he gets hit by a car. Or truck, he, and it's really bad in the neighborhood and everything like that, and he's just walking home, and he just looks really bad, goes to sleep, and he has a spiritual awakening happening. That's the thing. I watch a lot of reviews of this movie, and apparently a lot of people don't seem to get it. <laughs> and I'm like, do I live in a Twilight Zone? My God, it's clear as day what this movie is. It's literally spiritual and enlightenment. <laughs> Like all the movies I've talked about before. And yes, this does deserve to be my enlightenment timeline. But if you don't know, if you new to my channel, go to my other channel. My other channel is called Twister Skull Movies and Games Studio. I talk about spiritual enlightenment stuff there. Um, but this movie does talk about it too. You get 666 references. You even see a reptilian in here. Most people will be like, what are you talking about? Oh, no. The Alpha J. Collins are in this movie. They just hype them with tentacles and shit. So, um... So, the main character finds out that he's different. As we... As do we all. <laughs> you know? And... He starts to notice that, you know, he starts to notice some weird things are going around his... Where he lives at. And then he sees a cop... With a with a shadow of a reptilian, you know, a, a freaking tentacle thing creature, basically. But it's a reptilian. That that's the one. That's one way they can show us what a reptilian is without putting it in your face. You know, why do you think Jim Henson died when he showed what the evil beings look like in the Dark Crystal? So there you go, and. And it's funny too because recently I saw Men in Black International and they had the exact same villain. Liam Neeson turned into Alpha J. Colin in that movie, too. So, and there is references in this movie to They Live Again, um, to The Thing, you know. And what else? Well, wrestling also, that's a thing. I'll get to those wrestlers in a minute. But, uh, this movie is just really good. It's just, it's from beginning to end, it's kind of wild, and I like it. I really, really like it. And, Eventually, he sees all these, he sees these people, and then the FBI come, and he runs away, and he hangs out with Willie and, and Vince, and Willie is a freaking dumb fuck. <laughs> uh, when Willie was knocking at the door, and, the, and when I first saw this movie, I was like, oh god, I'm gonna shoot you, Willie. I, I, I'm gonna let that Nazi next door kill you, because I'm that tired of you. <laughs> uh, that's how tired I was, and like... I've know, I'm known people like Willie before, and oh god, like, get away, <laughs> get away! <laughs> but 
But um, the second time I watched this movie, I, I, I enjoyed his character a lot more than the first time I saw it. Because the first time I seen this movie, I was pissed at this motherfucker. Runs away like a fucking coward and shit. My God. And I'm just like, ah, stay in fight, you fucking. <laughs> oh, you fucking cat. Why the fuck we save you? Um, But the second time watching it, yo, I love it. <laughs> I fucking love Willie. He's so, he's so like ah <laughs> that's all i can explain for willie oh god and vince always vince i'm not trying to say i'm not trying to say vince but vince he he i'm not saying he hates willie but he he finds him annoying too as do all <laughs> but um the main character let's see i need to look at his name again i'm sorry and um hold on guys i'm sorry okay sorry so angelino <laughs> sorry guys i keep forgetting these names i have to look back and forth for it but um angelino again he finds out who he really is he starts getting these powers and he's like what the heck he starts snapping because kind of loud the um not the men in black but um the mafia i could say uh, uh, i'll say the cops or the military you know or FBI, whatever you want to fucking call these motherfuckers, they come in to his own house, try to shoot his ass, you know? And I love that he, I love that he's trying to save his own house and shit. I'm like, yeah, because you have the right. If someone comes into your house and you don't want it, I don't care if it's a cop. I don't care if it's nobody. It doesn't matter. You have the right to bring that person in if you don't want to. It doesn't matter if they're a cop or not. But they will slow you all saying, would you mind if I come in? It's like, yeah, actually, I would mind. They try to do that just to slow your words a bit you know try to get more information out of you they try to play with you so i wish cops can get arrested and go to jail just the same way as like oh you you just manipulated somebody like that you piece of shit you know when a cop does that they're a piece of shit in my eyes sorry no they're a piece of shit in my eyes um oh but that's how they no piece of shit so <laughs> moving on um same thing with anybody that does that too but uh so, he starts noticing that he's half reptilian, you know, he starts, you know, obviously he starts noticing there's reptilians around him too, and they get captured, and then eventually they see K from Men in Black! They, it, to be honest, it could be. <laughs> uh, I, I won't be surprised, to be quite honest, because if you watch Men in Black, you kind of understand that K... I can understand K going to that dark side, in my opinion. That's just me. That's just me. I, as a little kid, I had a a Men in Black toy from Burger King. And when you squeezed it, it opened up the um, Men in Black guy. And it um, it looked like a... And it had an um, extraterrestrial alien on it with an eyeball and shit. I remember when I first saw that as a kid, that, that toy, I thought it was K. So every time I pressed him, I'm like, K is really an alien, you know? So I always thought that... I mean, for kind of like, it can't be that serious all the fucking time. I mean, there's a reason for it. Watchmen in Black 3. <laughs> but moving on. Um, so he sees um, Mr. K. And then there's another guy that keeps coming after him. That sh that um, that he killed. That um, This guy that killed Angelo's mom. And you find out that Angelo. That his dad was also a reptilian also. And he fell in love with a human woman. And the government didn't like that. They didn't want that. They didn't accept that. So they killed her. But they want him because he's part of the bloodline. And that's how they walk, basically. If you're part of their bloodline, they will want you to join them. Because you're part of that bloodline. They don't want you to get tainted, you know? Even though you already tainted, but not so much that... If it was like fifth generations of it, then yeah, you'd be tainted. But first generation, you're not, basically, you know? Um... That's how it is uh, with these reptilians. You got to know how these work. And when you, when you know how these work, when you know how these people work, you watch this movie and you're like, wow, I'm so happy. I'm so spiritual and enlightened to see this crap. <laughs> um, and then you see a whole bunch of FBI people. I mean, men in black people try to kill um, uh, uh, Angelo and his friends. I keep need to look at the fucking name. <laughs> sorry because they keep thinking i'm gonna forget it or mispronounce it and i'm gonna hate myself for it but um 
they do capture him. Then he gets MKA mind control. He does. He gets MKA mind control. And his reptilian part comes out of him. And he almost kills his friend, um, uh, Viz. And when I saw that, I was like, wow, he almost killed his friend. And then when... It's so cool how the animation is. The animation in this movie is actually really good. When you think it's not good, or you'd be like, uh, eh, no. They smack you in the face and be like, motherfucker, you don't think I'm good? Oh, no, I'm good. <laughs> you know? And yeah, it's really good. It really is good. I love the animation. Really do. Um, one of the reasons why I even watched the movie to begin with, because I saw it on Netflix. I'm like, oh, that looks like a nice movie animation. I'll probably watch it later or something like that. Then my friend kept talking about it, and I'm like, might as well watch it. Because he said, everything that you've been looking at is literally in this movie. Yep. <laughs> everything. Um, so once Angelo finds out he has these powers, he, again, he almost kills his friend and his friend is, um, Viz, Viz, he literally tells him, you know, I'm your friend and shit before he like literally almost dies and shit. You see his fiery hair go down. His eyes are just completely gone. And then he wakes up like, <coughs> dude, what the fuck happened? And he, and, and you kind of feel sorry for the main character because he starts crying and you're like, damn, man, like if that happened to me, I would stand in the corner for like at least 10 minutes <laughs> and cry my ass off. But um, then you got the guards being like, hey, be quiet. Then, yeah, um, when I saw that, I'm like, shut the fuck up. And I'm trying to have a moment here. <laughs> I just almost killed my best friend. Let me have this moment. <laughs> Let me have this sombered crying moment. But no, <laughs> you know, I love that point. Um, he's like, you little brat, so I'm going to get dinner. Dinner, please, bitch. <laughs> I'm half reptilian. I can just. <laughs> uh, so fucking hilarious. But they're all funny parts in this movie. There really is. Um, when they go deep into Los Angeles, it reminds me so much of Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. For crying out loud, they even dress the same. <laughs> For crying out loud. You know this movie was inspired by Men in Black, San Andreas, and They Live. You know they you know they did. If not, then they probably were inspired by They Live and San Andreas. If it's not Men in Black, they probably just shoved Men in Black in there. But trust me. Most likely they were inspired by those three things. But um, if not, then not, you know. Um, that's what happens sometimes. Sometimes you put things on screen and people be like, that's inspiration of this. And the creators would be like, no, we just had ideas and we put it together. That's kind of a coincidence. Sometimes it's never a coincidence. Never. It's never a coincidence. Why? Because there's no such thing as coincidences. Things happen for a reason. Most people don't want to believe that, but <laughs> ask the universe of that. <laughs> uh, listen, read the law of one. See if the universe tells you, yeah, okay, you know? <laughs> and if it does, yeah, fix your life. Um, moving on. <laughs> uh, this is what happens. When, when you watch a spiritual movie that talks about truth and everything like that, you have to talk about some things that you, you open your mind up to, you know? But this movie is really good. It's made by Universal, well, it's published by Universal, um, which is surprisingly, you know. Um, I really thought Universal wouldn't give a fuck about this type of shit, to be quite honest. Why? Because ever since Scott Pilgrim vs. The War, they don't want to do shit like this anymore. Like, they don't want to throw money or spend money. That's why you saw cats all CGI and shit. <laughs> and what, the the dark side, the dark series that they were trying to do with bringing back the Universal Monsters... Like, you fucked up, <laughs> you know? But, um, it's, it's sad because these, because this studio, this studio made, made these characters and they don't know how to fucking make it. It's like DC or Warner Brothers don't know how to make a Batman film. It's like, you created these characters. What's wrong with you? Um, but moving on, sorry, just got on a tangent there. But, uh, so eventually you get these wrestlers that, um, that basically know that, their time has to come of saving the world. And I like that. A lot of people didn't like some of the wrestling wrestler parts because a lot of people like, what was the point of them being there? That, that's the thing. If you're spiritual and enlightened like me, you realize that these wrestlers are there for one reason, one reason only to save the world, to keep quiet. No one won't know who these are. And that's fine. They even say it in the movie. They're like, no one won't know it's us. Some of them might feel disappointed about it. But the guy that made the experiment and all that, that, you know, that took these wrestlers in and everything and made the rocket with them, he was like, Let, and let's keep it that way, you know? That's how it is. 
And this is how these evil beings and some good beings work. You know, they will do some, the bad beings will do bad things and keep it to themselves. And also the good people, they will save the rest of the world, but they won't tell nobody. Why? Be, why? Why would they tell people? You know, um, I can understand why they should tell people, but at the same time, then you, then people will see, oh, your fame and glory and everything like that. And people think, and people will treat you in a certain way and everything like that. So in a way, I'm glad they showed that in the movie because it shows that even the star seeds, light workers, even if we stop the reptilians, the Afrojacolians, that does not mean the masses is going to know, you know? And some people will be like, that's fucked up. We should know. We should know that these evil people that run this planet will be taken out. It's like, yeah, you will, but you need to open your mindset to know. If you don't know, then you don't know. You're just going to be ignorant for the rest of your life, you know? Um, and that's how I took that interpretation of those wrestlers because it's fucking true of how they of how they were doing, basically. And it's funny that we're, um, they were um, following cockroaches and everything like that. It was so funny. I even saw a, a, a meme of like, oh, you're not scared of me until I grow wings with a cockroach and everything like that. And I'm like, that's so true. And that was before I watched this movie. <laughs> so look at that. You know, I was going to watch this movie probably eventually anyways, because all the stuff that I was looking at, you know, I think the universe wanted me to watch this movie. So there you go. And thank you, universe. You know, I really enjoy this movie. I think Motherfuckers is a good movie. I highly recommend it. And if you're spiritual enlightenment, you will get this movie 100%. If you're not spiritual or enlightenment or in tune with yourself, you're probably going to get confused with this movie. Not to say you won't be entertained or not to say you won't like it. But if you, if you don't know what they're putting on screen or what they're saying or what they're conveying, then you won't get it. And from... And from Every time I watch a review about this movie, a lot of people don't seem to get it. And I'm just like. Now, I'm sure there's videos out there that people do get it. But the ones that I'm seeing, I'm just like, what's going on here? Like, you guys know this is an inspiration of They Live in a way. And what They Live did is exactly what this movie is doing, too. And yet you're like. This is why the human consciousness doesn't fucking grow because of your ignorance. <laughs> My God, because the human consciousness is one. And that's where you go when you go to sleep or die. So there you go. Um, I could talk about that way more, but this is just more about the movie. And it is spiritual enlightenment. He sees his dad. Um, Eventually, he sees his dad in a flashback and shit. And th that's when he got... That's around the part when he got captured and shit. But then he defeats the guy that killed his mom. Which, in a way... When I first saw the movie, I was all like, mm, I wish he came after the guy that that kidnapped him and brainwashed him, you know, and his daughter was part of the whole fucking thing, even though the main character likes him and likes her and shit. And I could see a sequel to this movie. Will it happen? I mean, it came out in 2017. You'd think we would have it right now. But, you know, hey, things take time. And so does fucking animation. <laughs> okay? That shit takes a while. Okay? Look at the old Walt Disney films and Cuphead. That took a while to make, okay? So, there you go. But um, if there is a sequel to this movie, let me know. And I know there's there's comic books of this movie. So, maybe there is a sequel to this movie, just in comic book form. Or, they had comic books and they made it into the film that we see here. It is possible. But, um, it's not like it's never happened before anyways, you know? We got comic book movies and all that shit that take inspiration and this and that, so... But overall, this film is really, really good. I highly recommend it. Everything that you see in this movie is literally just spiritual and enlightened, really. Especially when it gets towards the end. And it's cool how all the gangs come together and shoot the one guy that killed the main character's mom. It's like... <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm just laughing. And this this is one part of the movie too, when um they're getting um they're trying to get um the main character and his best friend, and they're like in an abandoned house and everything like that, and they that's when they found out they're terrorists and everything like that. He was like, "I was just a normal dude, now I'm a fucking terrorist." <laughs> and then these FBI, I mean, Men in Black people come, 
And then the the gains, the popo gain was like, oh, you you think I'm tell him what to do? Ha ha ha! Shoots the guy, and he's like, ha 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 ha! And then he gets shot, and he's like, oh, ah, ah. <laughs> fucking hilarious! It's like, oh, that actually hurt. It's like, yeah, no shit, bitch. <laughs> Oh, funny moments like that is awesome. So, overall, watch MFKZ on Netflix. It's really good. Highly recommend it. I I'll, I will get this DVD. I will. I'm going to get it. Maybe um maybe Blu-ray or just regular DVD. Either way, I'm going to get it. What do you guys think about motherfuckers? Do you think it's pretty good? Do you get what I was trying to say in this video about spiritual and enlightenment and all that? And if you don't, then that's fine. You know, just because you listen to it in this video does not mean it won't happen to you. Because, hey, if you watch this video, then that means you're a step closer. So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.